In this episode of Real Women, Real Wisdom, I'm talking with filmmaker, documentary filmmaker, Joyce Johnson. And Joyce's latest documentary is called Mother, Caring for Seven Billion. And this documentary really opened my eyes up to a lot of topics that, quite honestly, I probably ignored. Because maybe I thought, eh, they're not going to affect me in this lifetime. Well, we can't ignore them anymore. Topics such as population growth, the health of our planet, poverty, worldwide poverty, and why doesn't it go away? And why can't children all over the world, boys and girls, get an education? And women's rights, you know, having a child or not having a child, that's a human right. There's so many topics in this documentary, but they all weave together with one common thread, our planet and the health of it and the health of us on it, the air quality, the soil quality, the water quality. You know, if you're a parent, uh, I urge you to watch this because there are some pretty hard to listen to facts. Maybe they're not hard to listen to, perhaps they are we must listen to. You know, a fact such as in a very short time, you know, 35 years when our children are adults, they're going to be living on a planet that has to sustain 10 billion people or more. 10 billion people. So, don't be scared. <laughs> because what I really hope that you get from watching this interview and then the documentary is the feeling of empowerment to know that you can participate in the healing of this planet right now, today. And one of the ways we absolutely can participate is to watch this documentary and then discuss it with the people we love. Talk about it with your kids, please. So, grab a beverage and a snack because this one's a little long, but I really hope you enjoy and I really want you to watch the documentary. Thank you, Joyce, for joining me today. Uh, we're talking about your documentary, which is entitled, if you would please, title, say it for us. <laughs> oh, it's Mother Caring for Seven Billion. Mother. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. This is an important film documentary. It's very important. I want to ask, what's the inspiration behind, you know, why did you make it? But also, what's your intention with it? Okay. Well, um, my husband and I, um, we produce documentaries and mo we, mostly we've been doing um, either historical or environmental documentaries. Mm -hmm. And our last film that we did was called The Great Squeeze. And it was a film that was about um, all the different um, stresses on the planet, um, population, um, fresh water, climate change, um, peak oil, um, soil depletion, everything, and how they, they were um, working together to undermine uh, our culture and our society. And we relate it to how it, it um, was linked to the downfall of different societies, um, different kind of depletions of resources in the past, like the Aztec and the Mayan um, the, and the uh, Anasazi. So that was our last film, but population was a piece of it. And at the festivals we would go to, people would um, always ask us at festivals, you know, what about population? You mention it, but you know, it's really a big deal and nobody's doing any films about population. And it's a huge environmental issue. It's a human, huge human rights issue and nobody's doing any films on it. And so we, uh, we were impressed by how many people were asking us this at festivals, so we started looking into it, and and lo and behold, there really weren't any comprehensive, you know, human rights and environmental um, comprehensive documentaries on population. So we um, there were quite a few um, just the human rights side of it, but not um, also environmental. Mm. And so we decided that we would. Um, uh, do it, and then of course we saw that you know environmentalists wouldn't talk to us about population, even though it's a huge environmental issue. Um, they just refused to be interviewed about it, and so we realized, wow, this is 
this is really big because people are not talking to us about it. They don't want to go on camera and talk about it, even though it's an important issue. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to because of all the stigmas associated associated with it. So, th so, so let's so back up a little bit. So, this film is about uh, population population growth, right? The growth, uh, the um, impact of that growth on our current environment, the the health of our planet. Also, touching upon women's rights issues, child rights issues. Why'd you name it Mother? Well, we named it Mother because um, it. Well, if you look at the uh, the front cover of of our um, our poster, mm -hmm. it's a kind of a darkened um, outer space look at um, a woman who's pregnant, and then her um, there's a light shining on her belly, mm -hmm. and um, it's the Earth. So she's symbolizing mother symbolizes um, our relationship with the planet, the life-giving um, relationship of the planet with everyone and everything on the planet. Mm. And then it also symbolizes um, how women are the center of, of the issue of um, population and um, w women are the ones who have children. Women are the ones who should be able to decide whether they're going to have children or not going to have children. And women should be able to decide their own destiny. And um, so we wanted women to be sent front and center um, as a symbol of the film. Yeah, you know, this, this, uh, this is a very important film for a female audience. And I'm so glad you reached out to us that it's all about women for this. Um, it's interesting because the the what I didn't realize when I started to watch it was I didn't it as a woman with two children myself yeah I never really realized how much of a decision does reside in the in the woman when it comes to you know how many children and even if the culture is not imposing on them they are still influenced by their culture Right, so it, it it does become a difficult conversation because how do you impact the decision of a woman on how and when and how many she reproduces? Like it's, what do you find? What did you find difficult in, if anything, in getting people to uh, address this issue for your film? Did you have any problems in? Because you have some really great people in this documentary speaking very intelligently on this very difficult subject. Right. Well, you know, um, the film Mother brings forward and, and really stresses the, the need to understand that, you know, having children is a human rights issue. Yeah. Every, every woman has the right to have children and she should have as many children as she wants to have. It's, it's a human right to decide how many children to have right. or not to have any children. Right. That's a human right um, in our view. Yeah. And um, she should be able to decide when she has children, how many children to have, how to space her children, and she needs access to um, the means to do that. And we are really lucky in our society that we have that ability to decide if we don't want to have, you know, 10 children or five children, we can, you know, use birth control, we can use um, other kinds of contraception to, um, to decide not to have children. Education and awareness. Education right? is really important. Right. And, uh, but there's women in other countries that aren't so lucky that live, yes. you know, they, they have no say when they get married how many kids they have, how quickly they have kids, right. like if they're having them every year, you right. know, and most of the children are dying, if they're dying right. because they're having too many children, they're too young to have children, their bodies can't handle the pregnancy, they're not getting health care they need. Maternal deaths is a huge problem mm -hmm. in a lot of developing countries. Mm -hmm. And um, if women had the power to decide, you know, to stay in school, to, um, and if they're, you know, if they, if they just had more of empowerment in their own lives, and if people accepted the fact that women um, have something to to um, 
contribute. Because okay, right. you know, when you have, keep half of the population down, uh, your society just cannot advance. Yeah, you, you limit the potential it. of the infinite cap capability of the human mind. We're limiting our potential as a civilization. Oh, exactly, exactly. And it's, it's just a no-brainer that, that women need to be empowered. And when we give women a choice, you know, women want to pay for school for their kids. They want to buy good food for their kids. They want to have, you know, uh, a, a, a good roof over their heads. Mm -hmm. They want what's best, clothes for their kids. They want everything that's good for their kids. And, you know, it's so much easier to do that. And they know it. Women know it. They know it's easier to give that to three or four kids instead of ten. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They can do it much, much easier with the fewer kids they have. If they space them out three years apart, their children have a much greater chance of surviving instead of having one every year. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, the spacing is a huge issue, both maternal health and child survival. Right. Well, the being population is a yeah. population is a very big, um, not just a women's rights issue, but it's a um, children's rights issue yeah. because children need. Um, Every child deserves to be wanted and cared for, mm -hmm. nourished, I mean, mm -hmm. every, nurtured. Mm -hmm. Every child deserves that. And um, so when many, you have, so many and, and population is, is you know, it, it touches reproductive rights, it touches mm -hmm. everything, and education, poverty, everything. And if, if a woman, um, if a child's born that didn't, wasn't wanted, and isn't cared for. They're in the streets, and you know who knows what's happening to them. Who is exploiting them? And when children um, are wanted and cared for, you know the, the parents generally um, will keep a closer eye on them, and you know they won't be necessarily, you know, exploited. Uh, they have a less chance of being exploited. If they if if they you know if, if you have ten children you can keep an eye on them better than if you have two children or three children, basically. It, it's um. I always say that the the every child deserves to be loved for goodness sakes right and, and I always I always think about countries that, you know that, that you highlight in the film, but any impoverished nation any crowded impoverished nation or developing country or especially countries that where there's war going on right now and there's atrocities going on right now I always say like the belief system that these little kids are developing just because of where they are and their circumstance what happens to that generation with that belief system 10 20 years from now like they're the ones that are the primary caregivers of our planet at that time it's very dangerous now the right. question, the question I know you we talk about this film I love that the you highlighted two women and I love that these women come from opposite ends of the well, of a circular planet there's really no opposite ends but Ethiopia and America right so before we get to that I want to ask you it seems cuz you bring up environmental issues I mean some real consumption related issues you can't ignore and you bring up the child's rights and poverty you know um if we talk about the the environment and the health of our planet at this time, aren't governments where perhaps the culture is counterproductive to this co conversation? Do you see that the, the, the kind of people can't ignore this anymore at a government level? I mean, the, the planet is what it is right now. So are you seeing some hope here that governments are, with cultures that are counterproductive to this conversation, are they getting that the, there's no choice anymore to pay attention here? Well, you know, the, the, this is the thing, is that population is divided into two different issues, um, overpopulation or, or just population in general. So on the, um, in the American and the Western societies, the, the wealthier countries, mm -hmm. what you have is um, you have an, a problem with overconsumption. Right. One American consumes for like 30 Ethiopians. So we consume waste, pollute. Any, any middle class person on the planet, and that's just what they do. In some countries, they're doing it more than other countries. Um, the U.S. Is a, is a huge polluter, but China is you know, quickly rising because they're adding about 
what is it, 50 million middle class every year in, in China or in the world, ah, which is great, great because they're, you know, they're becoming middle class, but they're building all of these, you know, coal fire power plants, you know, unfiltered, unregulated um, in China that, that's causing more and more pollution. Um, no, all you have to do is look at so Beijing and you see that. So, so some countries are really into population. China's government is one that has a really coercive, not a human rights, not a caring approach towards population where, you know, they're forcing, you know, women to have one child each. That's not a caring policy. That's a, that's not a right. That's obviously not right to do that. So when you say unregulated, I'm, I'm hung on that. Why would it be unregulated? What government oh, no, reason? They, they, they have these um, coal-fired power plants that they're, the people are, the companies are building in China without, um, they don't have the government regulations to like, you know, any kind of filter on these, um, these power plants. So they're just spewing coal, uh, the, all the, the sulfur dioxide and everything into the air. And they're going up like, what is it, the statistics, something like one a month or something uh, in China, these, these power plants, because they have coal and, um, you know, it's more expensive to, you know, to put into solar than it is to put into something that already exists because coal is a cheap, um, one of the cheaper ways of, because they, you know, all these middle class people in China, they need energy just like we do. Right. You know? And it's unfortunate that they're doing it the dirty way. But we have a lot of coal fired power plants here in the United States too. So, it's, you know, you can't cast stone without looking at our own system, but we at least have a regulation and we have filters and, you know, so it's not quite as bad, but it would be better, you know, for, you know, alter to have alternative yeah. energy, of course. Um, but what I'm just, it's just a point of like, and then other countries are, are more into um, population. Uh, it, you know, African countries are very concerned about population. Their governments are. Um, they just don't know how to, how to deal with it. And the, the caring way that our film talks about is the way to go yeah. through women's empowerment. Yeah. That is the way to go. So there's, the, as I said, there was two sides to population. There's the overconsumption side that's going on in the wealthier countries. Mm -hmm. That's one one asset um, aspect of it. And the other side is the humanitarian um, crisis caused by overpopulation and rapid population growth um, that happens in developing countries where it um, it's not really as much of an environmental problem, except when it comes to like maybe wood depletion of trees in Africa oh, yeah. is, oh. is a serious problem, and that is directly related to um, to population growth. Although, if you know, if countries in Europe and and uh, the United States came in and helped them with alternative energies, they wouldn't you know need to cut down so many trees. But that's how they you know they cook their meals is. You know they have they cut down trees and then they they need to cook so can't so we need to help them find other ways so that they don't cut down all their trees uh, on the continent obviously because that affects all the other species too that's the that's the encroachment of um, our species on other um, animals is when we you know deforest areas. To grow, to you know, so that we can cook. I mean, that's developing countries. So there's, you know, and then poverty, and you know, there's all kinds of issues that are are surrounded by the overpopulation. Uh, but the environmental impact is, and climate change, it's it's really the the wealthier countries. And the United States, we grow about 2.3 million people every year, which is substantial. Yeah. Two yes. Years. That's yeah. the size of. Um, you know, a large city, and um, every single year. So we, um, you know, we need to think about also in the United States uh, if it's something to consider, it's something yeah. to think about when you're deciding your family size, you know, because of that. Um, we're going to talk about the two women that you highlight in this film. One's an American and one's an Ethiopian. They both are women from big families, and what I thought was very poignant was 
you 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 your film shows the decisions that they've made to their life primarily due to the fact that they came from such large families tell us about these two women and tell us about why why did you consciously choose an american woman and an ethiopian woman because i thought that was very brilliant okay well we um we were looking for um an american woman because we wanted to show the two sides of population the um the american side and a developing country side and the two wow. two sides of it so beth um came from a large family of 12 mm -hmm. and including her parents and she in her own life decided to have two um, biological children so she and she also she was a child's rights activist so we were looking for somebody who was a child's rights activist or um, was working in um, some kind of women's issue and so she she was perfect for that and she she's a great example of a demographic transition in the United States which was um, going from large families to small families which and is adoption. what we did between the 60s and now, 1960s and now. Because mm. anybody over 40 remembers um, large families growing up. Um, but today it's it's not, it's luckily it's not that common. And to the have. adoption, I thought that was a very important piece. Right, and then she too. adopted, yes. she adopted to grow her family, um, she decided to adopt. So that's that's Beth, and we we wanted her. We wanted to find somebody who didn't know a lot about population that wanted to learn more and wanted to see, you know, what its impact was. And so she she was perfect. We met her. She was she had founded an organization called Mothers Acting Up, mm -hmm. and which is no longer around, but it was an important little organization in its day, from Boulder, Colorado, mm -hmm. and then. Um, so and then we wanted to take her to um, Ethiopia so that she could, you know, kind of be the eyes of and ears of of our audience, which is primarily um, the United States um, and Western countries, to see, you know, how what she could give her impression of what she sees um, and get, you know, kind of her viewpoint through the film. Right. It's her story going to. Um, Ethiopia, and there she meets Zanette, who's a great woman. She, um, you know, her parents tried to force her, like her sisters, to get married when she was really little, young, like you know. How 14, many kids? 17. How many kids in her family? It's a big one too. There's, it's it's ten children. Ten children. Right. Her her father. This is her father's second family, and right. in his first family, he had like. 12 or 13. I, I saw that. I was, wow. so he's got 26, 25, 6 kids. And, like what does, and he's not very wealthy, is he? No, no. They live in a hut. Yes. I mean, it's not even, it's like a, it's really, it's not even a hut. It's more of a, like a shack. And um, there's just a, a an open pit in the back as a latrine kind of thing. Yep. And um, the, uh, Zanette had, um, she has a really inspirational story. Um, she, you know, was tried to, her parents tried to force her to get married. And, and in fact, she had run away and then had um, come back and uh, uh, she got educated. She was listening to these radio dramas. Yes. That were um, critical for her. She, she, you know, the, the characters in the radio drama um, were not going to get married, didn't want to get married young, and they wanted to get an education and be able to work and, and provide, help provide for family and not have a huge family. And um, so Zanette was like, I want to do that too. Well, I'm not getting married, you know. And, and actually when she came back to live with her family um, after, you know, trying to avoid getting married, um, she had her dad listen to the, um, and her whole family listen to the radio dramas. And, and tell us and about he, the radio dramas, too, yeah, that's very and, important. No, no, and, and he actually, um, that's him, uh, that's the big impression that they had is yeah. in uh, societies that the, the dad listened to it was like, wow. He was influenced. I'm going to force my daughters to get married again. She'll just become a slave in a, uh, in, a, in, a in a household that's, that was his words. Yeah. And, um, and that's remarkable when the matriarch or patriarchal figure 
Yeah. Right? Man, right? From a, from a culture that he, to be influenced by a radio drama. This is something I really want you to tell us about. Tell, right. us, tell us who is making these dramas and what their intention is with them. Well, it, you know, it's really interesting because um, in the, if you go back in the history of the, the these radio dramas, um, it started in Mexico and it was called the Sabido Method. And it's um, this man um, uh, named Sabido, he started it in Mexico where he was, um, uh, he was running, I believe, a um, one of the telenovelas that was going on in, in Mexico, and he instilled in it um, pro-social themes like uh, birth control or you know women's education or women working outside the home or small family size and things. And then, um, lo and behold, women started getting more birth control. Family size started going down in Mexico. Now Mexico has has a comparatively low um, birth rate. It's a, I think it's at 2.2. It's about replacement. And uh, people were really impressed with this. They were like, wow, this really works. Um, because, you know, these women want to be like the women in right. the telenovelas. Amazing use so, of media for good. It's, it is. It's an amazing, <laughs> it's, you know, amazing. Edu uh, uh, entertainment yes. can be used for positive or negative. Right. And this is an example of positive. Right. So they went... Um, to um, other people have been using that and then uh, one of the um, NGOs that uses it is called um, Population Media Center mm -hmm. and they put pro-social pro themes into um, radio dramas in different developing countries and they've done it in um, Brazil Brilliant. which is um, <laughs> you know it's an emerging economy but they've done it in in countries all over Africa mm. and they um, it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, they, it's, 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 a, it's a fantastic inspirational um, program where they, they put in, you know, little snippets of, you know, don't beat your wife kind of thing from, you know, family violence, you know. One example they did in um, Brazil was um, they were trying to normalize um, Down syndrome so that, because people who had Down syndrome children were keeping them um, indoors and they weren't taking them to school and there was a lot of social stigma against um, children with Down syndrome and adults with Down syndrome and they weren't they weren't getting the services that they needed because they were kind of hidden away as a, a society and so they did a telenovela in Brazil where there was a little girl who had Down syndrome and you know the it they had like a huge increase of um, people calling to get help for their Down syndrome children. Wow. So these are examples of like right. some of the social things that the Population Media Center does um, in different countries. It's really great work so and that it, it my, actually has great that, success. That, that was my question. Population Media Center, that's the name yeah, of their Yeah, Population name? Media so Center. It's that's not just, just the name. Ethiopia they're doing this. They're doing no, 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 it's all that's over the fantastic. world. They have programs in, in Papua New Guinea. They have programs. And, and it's not just on, um, you know, reducing family size and and uh, but that's a key. Yeah. It's a key to getting once you can get family size down, you have a much greater chance that the daughters are going to get educated. Right. Because if you have ten children and you can only afford to educate four, you you know, it's 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 sad, but they pick the boys. Mm -hmm. It's like food. Mm -hmm. If there's only enough food for five kids and you have ten, they give it to the boys, mm -hmm. you know. It's a, there's an order of people who eats the dad, the boys, the mother, and then the girls eat last. You know. Yeah. No. I mean. Always eat last. It. There's. That's reality in a lot of places. It is. It's Absolutely. reality, and it's sad. And if 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 if, you know, women had more control over their lives and their destinies and how many children they had, and right. uh, then. It would be a win-win for all of them because you know these countries that have a high population, a rapid population growth, they can't keep up. Their schools can't keep up. Right. Their their you know can't social structure can't keep up. Can't feed the, them. <laughs> nothing. They they can't feed them. They can't you know they can't do anything. And and so it's 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 for society. It puts a lot of strain on society, and and can lead to conflict, revolutions. You know, can lead to all kinds of things. So um, 
it's in society's best interest, it's in a family's best interest, it's in a woman, a girl's best interest um, to can have a family size that, that the family can afford to feed and educate and nurture. Um, and that's kind of what, that's what our film, uh, that's the message that our film tries to get across is that, you know, for poverty issues, uh, women's equality, uh, you have to speak about, you have to talk about population. Because it touches reproductive rights, it touches poverty, it touches, uh, in the United States, it touches, um, you know, climate change in uh, countries where there's emerging middle class, it's climate change. Um, well, it's, know, just, it's just an important topic. I, I, I'm, most, I'm really excited about these radio dramas. I, I, I can't get that out of my mind because I know that there's a lot of great organizations out there doing great work. And there are a lot of people in government that are working hard to impact these kinds of changes that we need. Um, the radio dramas, though, what I, I get the sense that that is an amazing vehicle for uh, countries, civilization, societies in, in, in um, underdeveloped countries that are not so jaded by the consumption and materialism of the wealthier countries. It, that, and then there's so much love and peace. I'm a, I, I promote peace and love everywhere I can. Wow, it's a powerful vehicle for that. So I am excited to hear more, more about that, that organization. I'm so glad you told me about it in this documentary. Now, the documentary also contains some sobering facts. You know, we can't walk away pretending we, we didn't hear certain things once we watched this film. The thing that I, I heard that I wanted to ask is um, regarding, you, there's something in the film about even if today, to, today everybody decided from henceforth we're only going to have one kid one or two i forget what it said in the film i think it was two it two. was two uh it, it's still that's not really the amount of help that i mean it's really not going to address the uh the poverty issues and the empowerment of women issues and the health of this planet who so desperately needs healing can you tell us a little, can you talk a little bit more about that i mean it's i want to Get some reality population in here. momentum. What is it? A population momentum. Yes. Because like, we have, um, uh, you know, a large percentage of the world's population, not in the United States um, and Europe, but in developing countries, is under the age of 30. Yes, yes. The majority of people are, live under the age of 30. So they're not even um, starting families yet. So there's a huge group of people on the bottom of the pyramid who are going to be moving up. Yes having children. So there really isn't, um, you know, it's just one of those things. It's if everybody had two children, um, the, the world would peak at 8 billion. Mm -hmm. We're at 7 billion now and we would peak at 8 billion. And realistically, that's not going to happen because right. right now there's so many countries where people are having more children right. that it, now the UN is saying it's going to be more like 10, 10 billion people you know, by 2050, something like that. And so it's um, it's just, it's going to happen, all these people. And it, it's... And um, it's all of, like, everybody who's watching right now, 2050 is roughly 35 years from now? Right, right? 36 years from now. Yeah, so anybody who has a child... They'll be alive then, They're, definitely. This child is going to be our children. We will too. <laughs> yeah, our children are going to be adults on a planet that has to support potentially 10 plus billion people. So the quality of the water, the air, the soil, everything, the rain, the snow that comes down. This is, you know, I, I don't know what to say because... At one point, I, one, I'm trying to make people aware that your children are going to be living on this planet very soon. But then the other side of the coin is there's, there must be there must be actions we can all take now. So um, you know we're talking about so mothers that are watching, right? So mothers, all you mothers out there with children any age, I think the point I'm trying to make is that, and you said something about the year 2050. We may roughly have eight or nine million people on the planet at that time, right? Roughly. In, right. 
So I mean, this, roughly. In, in, in our children, people with little kids right now, when they're adults, which if you're a mother, you know that time goes in a blink of an eye. One minute they're the cutest little thing in the world. Next minute they're like, oh, Mom, <laughs> it happens so fast. So believe me, when I tell you your children being adults, it's going to be fast. And what kind of planet, what are they going to have to deal with at that point? What is, uh, you know, A, what are they going to have to deal with as far as, the, you know, is the environment going to get better with more people? Hmm, I don't think so. Poverty going to reduce with more people? I don't know. And then, really? um, so, you know, speak to that and then um, tell us what we can do now. What are we should be thinking about now with for our children? So, population has um, been increasing. Yes. And it, and it was increasing really quickly. Like, the first Earth Day was 1970, and we were about 3.5 billion. And in the last 30 years, um, 30 until 2010, yeah. Or, or 40 years, it um, doubled. So in 40 we went years. From three and a half in 40 years, it doubled. So we went from three and a half to seven billion, right. and which we hit in 2011. And but we are not going to double in another 40 years. Luckily, you know, it is slowing down. But um, you know, we've already seen everybody. I think anybody who lives in a city has noticed. Um, what population growth has done to their quality of life. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's gone to the zoo and noticed there's no parking left, anybody who has, you know, sitting in traffic jams for hours, they know what is happening with population um, growth because every people are moving to the cities. Everyone is moving to the cities. Right. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that people, people aren't living in small towns in the United States anymore, but um, and so some small towns have, you know, people, but some, a lot of small towns are having problems keeping people um, really? because they're moving to cities for jobs. Ah, unemployment. And that's been happening, yeah. for, the last, that's been happening for the last 30 years, 30, 40 years. But, um, you know, I think the quality of life, uh, the, you know, pollution, uh, it's just, uh, and, and equality, I think e the gap between the haves and the have-nots is just going to get wider as the population increases. The United States increases by, you know, roughly 2.2 .2 million every year. And, um, you know, I think our country, the United States, we have a tough time making sure that everybody has the education, um, you know, the food that they need. There's people with food insecurity in the United States. Yes. Unfortunately, um, you know, and food stamp programs are being, you know, cut right now from our government. So there's all kinds of issues um, that population will make worse. Um, and then the sense of, you know, you know, going to the park uh, and having it be crowded. Everybody's, I think anybody over 40 has noticed things are more crowded right. than they used to be. That's true. And of course, unless you live in a small town in the middle of, you know, Kansas, then you, you might, might say, wow, everybody's moved. Nobody <laughs> lives here right, anymore. Right. You know. I didn't think of that um, employment being the driving factor for uh, moving to the cities. And employment is directly related to the amount of consumption. Right. right. You know, in the United <laughs> States, they need to, um, because of population growth, they need to create, the United States needs to create 150,000 new jobs every month. Every month. Every month to keep up with population growth. And so when the economy slows down, it's a huge factor because you have all these new people coming into the workforce more than, than is dying or retiring. And some people are just staying in the workforce because they can't afford to retire. So they're just staying in the workforce. So you're not just seeing that, you know, oh, I'm 65, I'm out, you know. So, um, it's it's just a tough uh, tough situation, um, you know. The economic growth machine just can't keep up uh, with population growth. Even in the United States, it's tough. So, in the it's United States, what are some of the things that are giving you optimism and encouragement with this? Like, what are you seeing in this country that's, you know, all right? They're doing something about it. Well, you know, um, the Affordable Care Act is a great example, um, or Obamacare,
because they're making um, birth control affordable or free to women uh, for the first time. They're, they're making insurance companies cover it. Uh, and that is something that is super important because 40% of pregnancies in the United States are unplanned. 40%, uh, wow. 40%, 40%, 40%. In fact, it might even be higher now. It's, wow. it's, it's, it's amazing. It's so much higher than in um, like Europe, countries in Europe. And then we have education, you know, very little, um, if not backward education, sex edu education for teenagers, you know, so we have the highest teen pregnancy rate of any developing country, a developed country. We have the highest teen pregnancy rate, America does? Uh, America does, of all the developed countries. Developed countries. Not developing, obviously. Right. I got it, I got it. You know, they get married at, you know, 13 or right. something, wow. 14. But we, um, uh, you know, we have a, a huge issue of, of women, you know, accidentally getting pregnant that uh, I think low-cost low birth control or free birth control would really help. And more access to, to correct information to girls and, and boys when in high school, um, would be, is a would be a great thing to help, you know, decrease our forty percent unplanned pregnancy rate. Mm. So, um, you know, one thing I keep thinking keeps coming to me during this whole interview is, for people that traditionally disagree with things like sex ed in 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 school, sex education in school. I think I was in I was in middle school when we had those awkward films. <laughs> I remember though. Um, but there's people, right, in this country, let's talk about America, there's people in this country that are opposed to that. They're opposed to the pill. They're opposed to things that are in direct conflict with trying to re control the population. Okay. Oh well, yeah, but don't use the word control population. Not control population. Ooh, that's bad. Okay. Um, yeah. Not control, but Impact change. It's stabilize. Stabilize. The word stabilize or slow. Slow, you know, or impact the ability of our planet to support these people. You know, like the right. get heal, get everybody to be well again, um, Earth included. Do you find? Do you see evidence of overwhelming fact of climate change, poverty, unemployment, uh, women's rights, children's rights? I mean, just the bottom line facts that you present in this documentary are you seeing that like the guy in Ethiopia the father are you seeing that people are putting aside maybe their preference to the real reality of what's happening do you see anything like that happening in this country because that's important like people that are against uh, giving birth control pills to people you know, these are the people that have to wake up to some realities. I'm just looking for some hope here, <laughs> optimism. <Okay. laughs> I want to hear that people are waking up. <laughs> okay. Well, I think um, you know, in Mother, we try to um, you know put forward a really positive, um, you know, a positive face on this problem by looking at you know caring solutions. Yeah. Um, we highlight um, some of the work of Rianne Eisler, who wrote The Chalice and the Blade. And it's, it's all about investing in children, mm -hmm. investing in women and children, especially children. If we invest in our children with education, uh, with the correct, with right information, um, they will make the right decision. I'm very confident about that. Um, they just need to understand what the problem is. They need to have a, they need to have a framework, a caring framework, to um, move forward, and um, that I think is is crucial. Uh, and for everybody, it, what everyone can do mm -hmm. is um, you can talk about population, you support uh, birth control to not only in the United States, but in developing countries, um, uh, contacting your senator or congressperson and making sure that, um, you know, our support of other countries is, you know, should be dependent on whether or not they have policies in their country 
that support women and that treat women um, as equals. That I think should be a part of our um, our foreign policy mm. is to rate countries on how they treat women. Mm. And our foreign aid should be dependent on how they treat women. Are women empowered in their society? And if they're not, then we should restrict our, um, our aid to their countries and or help them um, find ways to empower the women in their country so that they are using both halves of humanity and not just one half. Are you able to get this film into the high schools? Yeah, you know, we have, um, uh, we do have, we have an, uh, an academic version that's available for high schools um, and middle schools. Excellent. Um, and universities, we have sold quite a lot to universities and um, high schools um, and middle schools. Not as much in the high schools and middle schools, but universities we've sold a lot to. Um, you know, it's a great um, comprehensive, balanced um, uh, documentary that's, um, you know, entertaining, fast-paced. It's not one of those slow uh, documentaries where you're yawning a little bit through it. It's a very right. fast-paced documentary that right. goes, it goes fast. You know, you blink and you miss something. It's, yeah. it's, it's intense. It's, the the, the uh, impression that I get, um, you know, I'm at festivals and people talk about the, how they felt about the film. They, they're all like a deer in the headlights mm -hmm. kind of thing when the lights go on. Like I was just, wow, I didn't, I never thought about that. I never put that together. I never linked those issues together. I didn't realize that. And so, you know, we, um, you know, we think that the film is, uh, it's an important tool to start a conversation yes. about um, this, you know, crucial human rights issue, uh, population. Uh, it's important to talk about. Yeah. Because, you know, if you look at the, um, our, foot, our footprint on the planet, it's not just our consumption, it's our consumption times our number. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the American consumption, you take our American population times our consumption, and that's our impact. If you decrease one of those, you decrease our impact. You know, you do, and if you decrease both of them, then you increase a lot the um, impact. If you decrease consumption and population, you greatly decrease uh, our impact on the planet. And so that's the, the equation for um, our footprint on the planet. And if we want to decrease our footprint on the planet and uh, help to heal the earth, um, one of the ways, we have to look at both sides of the equation. We have to look at the, um, or both halves of, the, of that part of the equation, population and our consumption, yes. especially in the, in the wealthier countries. Obviously, you know, in developing countries, you're looking to um, increase equality in their country so that they are increasing their consumption mm -hmm. and increasing because they need to be pulled out of poverty. Poverty. You can't, yeah, people you need can't to just have, and, and, but poverty, they will pull out of poverty once their family size goes down. They will have a better chance. Each family will have a better chance of pulling itself out of poverty if its family size is smaller. Because, you know, children in the past were seen as an asset, as, as something to make money. You know, you send them out in the street and, right. and they begged or they or sold they farm, or they, farm they worked the on the yep. farm yep. or something, you know. Yep. And they, they brought in some kind of economic money and that was their job. You had kids to bring in money. But now, you know, you, uh, at least in a lot of countries, you don't really have to do that because if you educate them, you can, um, they can pay a big return in the end once they're educated. Mm. And, and, you know, societies change from that kind of looking at children as an economic asset yeah. to a ability. Yeah, I was just reminded of a film I saw, a 1930s black and white, forget who's in it, but it was chi based in China. And they show that, you know, they had no money, they were like homeless and whatnot, and and the mother had was pregnant, had a child, and the child was no more. And you infer from the movie that the mother made the choice because she didn't have any money to feed feed the. It really, you know, you know, one of the things I'm left with is into to you know in gratitude for you uh, talking with me today. One of the things I'm left with is 
you know, it's important that we feel we can do something, especially because we're mamas. You have kids, two kids. I do. You have two kids. We're mamas, and obviously we want our children to have a happy life on a happy planet, <laughs> if, if possible, right? We want happiness for them. Um, I think seeing this film and talking about it with people that you love is an action step we can take. When you speak to people that you love, you're speaking from the heart. So um, I hope that everybody can watch this. You know, watching it is one piece of action. Talking about it, you know, my mother, I have to say, she always, it was so funny. Every time we drove anywhere to the supermarket and back, right? She always used to give us lectures in the car because she, as even when we were children, because she would say, you know, I have you captive in the car right now. I can tell you things. <laughs> and she said it's so important to have those opportunities of like I must tell my children things but I'm so busy she's a doctor she always has been very busy but she I grew up with uh, all her lectures in my head because she managed to always have every opportunity she could to give us her wisdom of the world around it so mama's imagine mama's out there talking about this film with their children Right. I hope they can all do that. Do you have any, uh, I give you a microphone, you tell the whole world something. And in, uh, in closing, after making this film, which had to be an experience in itself for you, right. as a mother, tell us, um, tell us how you're changed by this. You're a mama. You've got two kids that are going to be dealing with this planet soon enough. What do you, what's your message? Well, I, um, my kids, they... <laughs> Obviously, because my husband's the director of Mother, and we have a little, we have our production company together, and so we're filmmakers together. Um, and we've had a lot of conversations at dinner about about women's rights, mm -hmm. population, and and everything. And I think my daughter, who's nine, is a little bit over. She's saturated with the subject, and she's <laughs> she's like, you know, but your movie is good. It's really good. Mother is really good. It's. It's not boring like other documentaries. And we're like, like oh, well, thank you. <laughs> that's that's her feedback for us. It's not boring like other documentaries. It's so funny. But, um, you know, I try, for my kids, you know, I I just try to, to give them the sense of empathy and what would it be like to live in other countries. Uh, and... You know, when they ask for things that are like plastic and stuff, I mean, I guess it's the environmentalist in me, you know, I, I say to them, you know, what, what is going to happen to this when you're done playing with it? Oh, you know, wow. do you really need this? Where, where is it going to go? You know, do you know that how long plastic takes to, to go away? Because just because it's buried under the ground somewhere doesn't mean that it's, it's gone, you know? And... Um, they're not, they don't really like that either. <laughs> you know, kids are, they're like, oh, mom, <laughs> you know, but it's true. And then they say, and I make them think a lot before I buy them things so that they, uh, they think about their consumption. And I think they, we've actually done a pretty good job to, you know, have them think really hard about stuff so they're not always consuming. I, I, I really want my kids not to be consumers. I want them to be thinking about, you know, where the stuff they're buying, where it's coming from, what impact it has for the people who made it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try really hard that they don't become consumers, just consumers, you know. That's, and, the, that's the challenge, you know. Um, it is. I, growing up in the, say, 80s, 80s, 90s, right, I've witnessed uh, children in school at the, in those decades being one myself <laughs> and uh, it's a very it's a stark difference in the um, buying behavior I've changed so much because God, I, I just think about all that stuff yeah. and having no bearing on the quality of my life just telling right. my daughter the other day all those purses and shoes yeah I, I didn't need it. Why was I buying it? And I think that that's, you know, that's that's the behavior that we're looking to see change in people. I think we don't, you don't need all that stuff, you know. And if you think you need that stuff, there's the 
beginning yeah, it doesn't make you happier. No. It, does, it won't make you happier and it's it's the you know our media is just designed to to turn us into consumers yeah. and, and if you live a little more simply you actually have a lot less stress because you're not wasting so much money uh, you're living simply you know and I'm not talking about like living in a hut or something well, uh, I'm just somewhere. saying yeah. <laughs> you know living below your means if you always live below your means then you have a lot less stress in your oh, life my God. It's, and, it, and it's just like yes. you know it's a Christmas here's an example of Christmas you know my son's first Christmas that he could remember when he was two my husband and I we went crazy and gave him a lot of toys and then we thought oh no that Santa next year he's gonna think that you know Santa doesn't love him if he doesn't give him the exact same number of toys uh -huh. right so we were like okay so is this what we want to do is every year give him this many toys because now we have an opportunity to scale back and give him the toys that we think you know he would really like but not go overboard and so we did and we're really glad we did because um, you know there's so much waste going on you know in in unfortunately around Christmas with the consumerism that um, I think that would that's just for us personally in our our life we've um, lessened our impact on the planet a lot by simplifying Christmas mm -hmm. and giving gift giving um, and, 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 and because it's, it doesn't, just giving a lot of toys doesn't show that you love somebody. That's right. You know, it doesn't mean anything. You know, giving hugs is what shows that you love somebody. Right. And our, I think our society is just, you know, warped our sense of what love is to away from the hugs to buying whatever a kid wants or buying way too many things for a kid. When I was little, I didn't have that many toys. I was super happy. <laughs> right. And, you know. I played with my Legos for years uh, and years. <laughs> I did too. So, you know, I, I think it's, you know, you were trying to keep up with the Joneses. The right. other kids get lots of presents. And so That's you try to do the same. And, yeah, and yeah. I think with my, because of where I am in my life, I work with my kids on, on you know, being informed consumer, not consumers, but being um, responsible um, uh, about purchases that you yeah. make. And do the That's, kids recycle? Are the kids... Uh, oh yeah, they're really into recycling. Yeah. And yeah, we did a good job with that. <laughs> good, good. And it's all ways, you know. Um, where I live in, in uh, New Jersey, our, our township is uh, has been recycling for, for years, and now they're going they're smart they're making it easy to recycle one container for all of your recycles right i love that because that is easy peasy people easy yeah. easy it's important to make it easy, easy because peasy, people yes. won't do it if it's not easy that's right and you know what if it's easy i believe this is just me but i believe that it becomes more fun and there's a growing pride in contributing to the welfare of the planet and it makes me smile makes me smile you know I get excited when I when I'm somewhere and I have a bottle it, do you recycle and they say yes you yeah you know so uh, recycling um, reducing consumerism you know right uh, focus that's something that, that people don't look at a lot is the the redo that you know it's reduce yeah. reuse yeah. and recycle yes they talk a lot about recycling but not the reducing yes or reducing. and then reusing right those two are crucial right. and you know I think that's something that if we all simplify a little bit you know the expectations for material objects that we have I think that would make that that would start the process of healing mm. and because mother is an environmental it's a human rights and it's an environmental film so you know we all not just with our um, talking to young people about how many children that they want to have, but it's right. also a huge part here in the United States and in Europe is consumption. Consumption, consumption. That's, consumption. That is a huge, huge issue. Um, waste consumption. You know, children thinking about, you know, what's going to happen to everything they use. Where is it going to go? Yeah, that's a great... 
that's a great topic to have with with families as, at the dinner table is to talk about so where does this go where does this aluminum can go or where does this glass bottle go when i put it and I put it in the trash, you know, or what happens to it when I put it in a recycling bin, you know. I, I didn't, I forgot to ask you, uh, in the, do you talk about landfills in the documentary? I don't remember seeing something about No, that. you know, we don't, we, what we do, we talk about how um, uh, there's more trash in the landfill than, it's like, I believe, 40% more trash in the landfill than in the 1970s because of population growth and people are becoming, um, you know, consumerism has just exploded, you know, since the 1970s. I mean, it's just exploded. One one film that my um, that made a big impression on my daughter, you know, my nine year old daughter, is the um, uh, Misrepresentation. The film. I don't Did believe you, I saw that. Was that not, oh, that's not right. Rosie O'Donnell, is it? No. I think she's. Uh, I think she's maybe one of the um, one of the people I interviewed. Heard, it. Yeah, but it's I'm about not... it's about you know how women are perceived in the consumer society and and um, how women are, are compared to men in, in the consumer society and uh, the unfairness and the unequalness of it. Um, so we, we have gender issues here in the United States too and that's another issue that um, is a good topic of conversation at the dinner table, dinner table is gender car. issues. Yep. <laughs> like my you, know, mom you throw like a girl. That's a gender, that's a gender problem right yeah. there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This is a this is a great thank you you know this this film is great this um I, I I appreciate the opportunity to be thinking about other things, and this film gives me that which I think is, I hope that that's your intention is to have people think differently a little bit, and uh, think about something some that they've never really thought about before. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I'm I am definitely going to be having these conversations with my daughters, and I hope everybody else does too. Uh, Joyce. Um, any last words? I think this was, I wanted well, to... Well, we yes. are going to have a free um, oh, yes. streaming okay. for the week of Earth Day on our website, um, www.motherthefilm.com. Mm -hmm. We're going to have free streaming the entire week of Earth Day. And uh, the film's only 69 minutes, so it's, it, it's a very fast-paced documentary. Um, it goes very quickly. Uh, I highly recommend everybody watch it, share it with their friends. Share it and it's only free it. for a week. Otherwise, it's three dollars, which you know for a rental movie right. is, is not it's, much. It's not much. But but will free be, is always nice. It's easy to share. Will it be share. on uh, Netflix at one point? Will it be on one of those? Oh, you know, we, yeah, we're going to be looking into that. We're okay. going to be looking into that in iTunes, but um, it is on Link TV also. Okay, and so people can watch it, and people can incent and encourage their loved ones to watch it. Right, and liking us on Facebook is another thing that's like great. Like on Facebook, and um, please, if you feel so compelled after watching it, get your high schools and middle schools to show it. That would be my um, call that's to action important. for you. Yes, have the schools, the colleges, um, get the, get get the young people to see this. That's that's my message. Get the young right. people to see this. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank um, you. I appreciate you bringing this topic to our awareness. I really do. Well, thank, thank you. you.